Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on light and color. The topic of this video is two-point source interference, and we want to know what is two-point source interference and how does it provide evidence for the wave model of light. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the interference of waves. An understanding of wave interference will be essential in understanding the topic of this video. So I've left a link to this video in the description section if you need to review it. Interference of waves occurs when two waves meet while moving through the same medium. There are two types of interference, constructive interference and destructive interference. Constructive interference occurs when an upward displaced wave meets up with a second upward or displaced wave. At the time of interference, the resulting displacement of the medium is greater than the displacement of the individual waves. Constructive interference can also occur when two downward displaced waves meet while moving through the same medium. Destructive interference occurs when an upward displaced wave meets up with a downward displaced wave while moving through the same medium. At the time of interference, the resulting displacement of the medium is less than the displacement of the individual waves. Let's consider a water bug on the water vibrating at a regular frequency to produce a collection of disturbances that travel at the same speed in all directions. The result would be a series of circular concentric wave fronts that are traveling across the surface of the water. There would be crests denoted by these solid blue lines and troughs denoted by these dashed gray lines. Now let's consider a second bug doing exactly the same thing producing a collection of crests and troughs traveling along the water's surface. If these two bugs were near to one another, the collection of crests and troughs would interfere constructively and destructively to produce a pattern that you see here. We would refer to this as a two-point source interference pattern because the waves from the two points or sources, the bug's location, are interfering constructively and destructively to produce a pattern. If we analyze this pattern more closely, we'll note that there are several locations of constructive interference where crests from one source meet up with crests from the other source or troughs meet up with troughs. In the exact center of the pattern, we'll notice a whole collection of constructive interference locations indicated by these red dots. Not only do they extend upward, but they also extend downward from the imaginary line that connects the two bugs. A little bit to the right of this line of constructive interference points, we see another set of constructive interference points where crests are meeting crests or troughs are meeting troughs. And we also observe the same thing to the left of this central line and below the imaginary line connecting the two bugs. Not only are there points of constructive interference, there are also points of destructive interference where the crest from one source meets up with the troughs from the other source. These blue dots here indicate a whole collection of destructive interference locations, if you look carefully, you'll notice they are at the intersection of a thick blue line with a dashed gray line. And not only do we see these blue dots to the right of the central line, we also see them to the left of the central line, and again we see another set of destructive interference locations located on the right side and another set on the left side. What we have here is a snapshot in time of the pattern of constructive and destructive interference points. But if we were to unfreeze time and allow the bugs to continue to create their crests and troughs together, spreading out over the water, we would observe that the pattern changes. However, if we were to look along the plane of the water, what we would notice at all the red dot locations is the water vibrating from a maximum positive displacement above the resting point to maximum negative displacement below the resting position. In other words, the red dot locations would be antinodal positions. And at every blue dot location, if we were to look along the plane of the water, we would observe those locations being points that are standing still. 
points of no disturbance whatsoever. In other words, they are nodal positions. Now, if you inspect the pattern, you'll notice that the nodal positions lie along lines, relatively curved lines, and we refer to those lines as nodal lines. And you'll also notice that the red dot locations lie along relatively curved lines as well, with the exception of the straight line in the exact center. And we refer to those lines as antinodal lines. So when we analyze a two-point source interference pattern, what we're observing is a pattern of alternating nodal and antinodal lines. So we've just seen a two-point source water interference pattern with alternating nodal and antinodal lines. And we have to ask the question, what about light? Could light do this same thing? And if light did do this same thing, what would you expect to see from two same frequency light sources producing light waves that interfere in the surrounding region? Well, to get an understanding of that, let's revisit a previous video in which we talked about two-point source sound interference pattern. Suppose that we set up two speakers in a large room like an auditorium, and we played, set two, we played same frequency sound from those speakers. We would observe an interference pattern with alternating nodal and antinodal lines. And if we had students walk across the auditorium along a line that was parallel to the line connecting the speakers, they would observe points of silence and points of loudness as they, uh, as they happened upon the nodal and antinodal positions within the pattern. So what would happen for light? Well, instead of having points of silence and loudness at the nodal and antinodal lines, we would observe points of darkness and points of of maximum brightness at the nodal and antinodal lines. In other words, we would see destructive interference resulting in darkness and constructive interference resulting in maximum brightness. Every year, physics classes across the globe typically do an experiment known as Young's experiment. In the experiment, monochromatic light from a laser is shined up on a slide on the slide is a double slit. As light diffracts through the double slits on the slide, we end up with two sources of light waves that then interfere as they approach a screen some distance away. Upon that screen, what we would observe is an alternating pattern of bright and dark bands. The bright bands are locations of constructive interference. Those are the antinodal lines and the dark bands are locations of destructive interference. Those are the nodal lines projected up on the screen. Now, while this experiment is done to measure the wavelength of light, we can't ignore the fact that it answers a question we recently asked. Can light do the same thing that water does? Can it undergo two-point source interference? And the answer is a resounding yes. Yes, it does. And because it does, it gives us, again, evidence that light has a wave-like nature. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a simulation called Young's Experiment, a science reasoning activity referred to as the models of light, and finally a tutorial page to help you brush up on the topic. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.